Good afternoon. It is March 28, 2022, uh, a little after 2, 2.15 to be exact, in New Brunswick. And today I just wanted to share a thought that has been playing in my mind over the last couple of weeks, maybe a couple of months. Um, so this video is geared towards the individuals that feel as if they're not up to snuff, they can't do what they need to do, they know that they should be doing more, and they feel like they're not exactly meeting that mark. You know, we're told in Philippians that we should strive to meet the mark. That there's a high calling that God has on our lives, and we ought to be striving to succeed in that regard. Now, over the last couple of weeks, many things have changed in my existence, and I'm sure many things have changed in whoever views this, um, in your life, in your job, your health, you know, things that you feel should be happening to you, things that you feel are just too much for you. And I just wanted to share some verses and some quotes that I'm personally taking as my guide throughout this period of change that my sons and I are going through. Uh, so just to share a little of what has happened and what has been happening with us. So I got a diagnosis that I have MS. I um, have decided that I need to sell my home so that we can get out of debt and see if we can get something somewhere else that is smaller. And my job situation is very sketchy. It's literally almost non-existent. And that's just where we're at. We're just at a place where what can be pressed is being pressed. And I have to ask myself throughout the pressing, what is coming out of me? And I realize that you may seek, I have an echo, you may seek blessings from the Lord, but to get the blessings from the Lord, there is an expectation that you do your part. God will do his once you do yours. And for a long time now, he has been speaking to me about my attitude when it comes to doing stuff. Personally, whenever I need to get something done, I'm a bit, I'm a melancholy choleric. So I want it done and I want it done now. And if you aren't doing it, okay, go sit down. I'll just do it myself. That's just my personality. And then I have the melancholy side of that. And that's not good for me, my health, or for the health of anybody else around me. Because that's not Christ within me, the hope of glory. That is the beast within. So I started stepping back from myself and listening more to how I sound when I speak. And imagining what my face looks like to my children when I'm, go wash the dishes, go, or whatever it is that I'm being very intense about. And I do not see the perfect picture of Christ in that face when I step back and I imagine a mirror before me looking back at me. Or when I listen to myself and hear the recording replay, because you do hear the recordings being replayed. Whether you have a physical device recording yourself or you have two small voices that, you know, have taken the tape and they're now regurgitating that, you know, voice, that guttural sound of annoyance or angst or whatever it is. And, you know, God has been showing me all of these things and I've been asking him, to help me to reflect him more perfectly. More than any other need that I have, more than my home selling, coming out of debt, or you know, finding a smaller home, although this is small, but finding something that would keep me out of debt, 
I need the Lord. We see the battles going on around us, the wars, rumors of wars. We see the call for food shortages, droughts, famine, um, lack of fertilizers, shortages in the stores across the world. Even recently in Jamaica, the Rural Agricultural Department there basically told all the citizens that they need to be using whatever space they have to grow food. I haven't been into Jamaica in a while, but we're generally not that moved by, you know, the things of the world because we're a little bit outside of the scope of, you know, land that anybody's going to attack. But it is affecting everyone. Everything is affecting everyone. And as I look at my life and I look at the things that I've been going through, I've come to realize that, you know what, I can't do it. I keep saying this to my children, if someone breaks into this house, I can't save you. If we go to the store and there's no food there, I can't feed you. And I literally cannot do anything for us. I can't take us out of bed. I can't do anything. Even if I had a six-figure income, I still can't do it. Because that's just trusting in myself. That's trusting in my strength and my ability. And the Lord has told us that the arms of flesh will fail us and that includes our own attempts to save ourselves from anything. So I've decided more now than at any other point to put greater effort into you know doing what God said in Matthew 6 where he says seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. So this morning I um decided because I've been reading through the Bible and I decided you know I'm going to make this morning different I'm not going to read my section in Chronicles that I should have been reading this morning I'm just going to read the Psalms and as I was reading the Psalms verses just started to pop out at me and I was like highlighting them and writing them in my little notebook and I realized that after reading it and then I listened to a sermon afterwards it was just like God was just bringing everything full circle as to the thoughts that he has been bringing to me about my own attitude, my need to change, and my self-reliance. Because most of the time, the reason why I'll get very, you know, anxious or get very annoyed at the delay is because it's affecting self. It's affecting my belief that I should be able to get this done and get it done now. So I'm going to share just those verses because I don't want this to be too long. Oops and the quotes. So reading through Psalms, I have five chapters that I'm reading from, but they're not very long verses. So Psalms 2 verse 12 says, Kiss the son, lest he be angry, and ye perish from the way. When his wrath is kindled, but a little, blessed are all they that put their trust in him. And to, for this verse, there is a quote from Sister White, which says, Trusting in Christ's strength. All are exposed to temptation and are liable to err. Upon no finite being can we depend for guidance. The rock of faith is the living presence of Christ in the church. Upon this the weakest may depend, and those who think themselves the strongest will prove to be the weakest unless they make Christ their efficiency. Curse be the man that trusted in man and make it flesh his arm. So when I read this, I was like, yes, Lord, I know that what I've been thinking over these couple weeks is definitely where you want me to be going. I can push, I can pull, I can, you know, do all the wheeling and dealing that I can possibly do. But at the end of the day, it's going to fail. It's not going to last. If it is not by God's strength and his strength and wisdom alone, you are bound for failure. It's as simple as that. And until we reach the point where we just say, you know what, God, I just give up. Um, I'm done with the fight. Whatever you want to do, you do it. Whatever you want to do, you do it. You will never succeed. You will never have the peace that passes all understanding. 
you know I think of like a child when you go into water they're so nervous they get you know you know literally like a little animal they're like so skittish they're so afraid they're gonna drown oh my mommy hold me I can't put my I can't just drop my seven-year-old in the water he would freak out okay he clings to you like <laughs> I don't know, like a barnacle to the side of the, you know, the seashore on the walls or something. He's just on you. And that's what God wants us to just cling to him. Stop trusting that we can do it. There are parts of it that are dependent on us. But for the most part, it is dependent on him. And sometimes it seems hard to you know, go to that place where you're supplicating, like literally begging God to work in your behalf. But it's a part of the humbling process. And that's what God desires more than anything. That if we would humble ourselves and call upon Him, He will heal our land. And the healing won't necessarily look as how you desire it to look. But it will be exactly how you need it to be. There is a quote from Sister White that says, God never leads his children otherwise than they would choose to be led. If they could see the end from the beginning and discern the glory of the purpose which they are fulfilling as co-workers with him. Desire of Ages 2.24-2.25 So, you don't know why God is leading you over this rough road. Well, you do know one reason for that. He has to press you like a grape so he can see if it's sweet juice or sour juice that's coming out. Because if it's sour juice, you're going to keep being pressed. So you got to try and, you know, trust in the Lord to help you to be sweet. And that comes from being intentional. That's the mainstay of being in Christ, being intentional. Every time you open your mouth, every time you think a thought, you have to keep reminding to yourself, never did man speak as he spoke. Because never did man live as he lived. Not even by a thought did he sin. And the more you keep reminding yourself of this, the more it becomes a part of you. Now, just to share the other verses. So Psalms 4, verse 5. Offer the sacrifices of righteousness and put your trust in the Lord. Actually, it was 3 to 5. But know that the Lord hath set apart him that is God before himself. The Lord will hear when I call unto him. Stand in awe and sin not. Commune with your own heart upon your bed and be still. Offer the sacrifices of righteousness and put your trust in the Lord. When I read this section of Psalms 4, I got three things from it. Psalms 3 says, Psalms 4 verse 3 says, But know that the Lord hath set apart him that is God before himself. It is hard for us to think of ourselves as godly because we know the things that we have done, we know the things we have said and thought and even now may still be thinking. But we aren't trusting in ourselves for our godliness. We are not trusting in ourselves for you know holiness. We are trusting in Christ. So we assume that what he says is true and then we accept it. And then we take Psalms, not Psalms, 1 John 1, 9 at its word where we confess our sins and know that he's faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So we are now covered by Jesus' righteousness. So we can stand before the Lord as godly. Not in our own you know, self-righteous way, but in the acknowledgement that it is no longer I, but Christ who lives. Now number two, it says that we should commune with our own heart upon our bed and be still. Every day we should take some time and just be still. As I said earlier, imagine the mirror. You are speaking to someone. How do you think your face looks to that person in irritation? Does it look Christ-like or does it look like the dragon? How does your voice sound? Sister White says in um, voice and I think it was voice in speech and song that we should train our voice to have an even cadence that is so relaxing. I've listened to people speak and the other day I was listening to Barbara O'Neill speak and I do not believe that that is how she spoke all the days of her life. Based on the way she carefully enunciates her words and 
lifts her voice and drops her voice, I can see and recognize that she trained herself to speak that way. And we do it with children, we do it with babies, we go to ooh and the ah, because we recognize that it is soothing to their souls. So when we're communing with our heart, you know what your difficulty is. My difficulty is my, you know, intensity in how I may bring across my desires. So this is my, this is my experience. Your experience may be something else. It may be your diet. It may be what you choose to watch and you're entertained by. You have to find that thing that is blocking your ability to trust in God because your trust in God is not so much or your lack of trust in God is not so much a failure to recognize what God can do because he has already done for you many other things but rather your belief that because you are still doing something or may have done something recently you are unworthy of that blessing so number five says offer the sacrifices of righteousness and put your trust in the Lord so there it says it you do what you need to do it says I can't remember where I think it was Paul who said it that if a man does righteous then he is righteous so if you choose to do good in that moment you are good because no good thing comes out of you except by the initiation of the Lord so you choose to do righteousness and then you can trust in the Lord because there's nothing in between the two of you at that point so Psalms 5 verse 11 says but let all those that put their trust in thee rejoice let them ever shout for joy because thou defendest them let them also that love thy name be joyful in thee we're thinking of war nuclear bombs blowing up travels in the air from Ukraine over to Canada to the Caribbean to America to wherever the, the air goes they had a um, not snow they had a sandstorm I think in the Sahara and it was affecting many other parts of the um, Europe and I think it even went as far as some sections of um, the Caribbean or something to that effect and look how far Africa is you know you're not gonna walk there in a day so that just shows you how much can happen even though you may feel so distant from it so that means that you can't protect yourself from it you know we're told to prepare for what is to come but we're not preppers you know where I don't know about anybody else but you know grabbing arms and keeping it to stop whoever tries to come through the door for the food mm, I don't really think that that's what God wants us to do but nonetheless we are to prepare but our preparation really has to be spiritual preparation my belief is this if we are truly seeking after God and something is about to take place God will whisper in our ear as he said this is the way walkie in it go to this point go down into the basement right now and close the door um, you know what I don't even want you to go back to your house just keep driving in this direction that is my belief but it only comes when we can fully trust him and to fully trust him we have to remove all obstacles sister white says that we should live in such a way that God can bless us God wants to bless us and for that to happen we need to have a Daniel life we need to have a Joseph life more importantly we need to have a Jesus life Psalms 9 7 verse 1 we're coming to the end O Lord my God in thee do I put my trust save me from all them that persecute me and deliver me and then Psalms 9 verse 10 which says and they that know thy name will put their trust in thee for thou Lord has not forsaken them that seek thee now you know it says and they that know thy name we always think of the name of God as you know God Jehovah Yahweh you know but I like where it says when he spoke to Moses merciful long suffering abundant in goodness and truth that is the name that I desire to know like Moses I'm not seeking after his hand I want to see his face 
Because all of these things are going to pass. I keep telling my sons, you know, we were talking and they were talking about, my my 10 year old was talking about, you know, what is the highest degree? And I was saying it's a PhD and then you have further studies. And he's like, oh, I could get a PhD. And I was like, yes. But you know what? At the end of the day, getting a PhD and having the big job, you only get three score and 10. And if by strength of days, you get 80. But if you give yourself completely over to the Lord, you can have a PhD and also have eternity. Right? You get up every morning and you don't know, what should I do? Should I go to Venus or Mars or some unknown world that we never knew about in this life? God has promised us so much. And he wants us to recognize that he's a God that is consistent. But his consistency does not cause us to escape from the difficulties of this life. Because those are not on him. Those are on the devil. But we can open ourselves up to the devil working more intensely in our lives if we are not intentional about the things that we do. No wicked thing shall I put before my eyes. My body is a temple of the Lord. All of these things matter. What is my thought life? What is my attitude towards others? Am I forgiving? Am I growing closer to the Lord? Do I love to study his word? I heard um, Elder Mason, Marcus Mason speak recently. And he was saying something that I always say to my sons. That the life that you live here will be a continuation of the life that you lived there. So if right now you do not desire to study the word, you do not like to just be quiet and be in his presence, you won't make it there. God won't allow you in. And as a matter of fact, he doesn't have to allow you in. You will not want to go in. We won't be floating around on clouds. We know that. But the intensity of our desire will be for one person, one person only, God. Everything about us will be about Him. And it has to begin now. How are you reflecting Him now? How are you trusting Him now? And I'm going to read just two final quotes before I end. And it says, <coughs> He does not permit us to pass by the homely but sacred duties that lie next to us. Often these duties afford the very training essential to prepare us for a higher work. Often our plans fail that God's plans for us may succeed. We are never called upon to make a real sacrifice for God. Many things he asks us to yield to him, but in doing this we are but giving up that which hinders us in the heavenward way. Even when called upon to surrender those things which in themselves are good, we may be sure that God is thus working out for us some higher good. Ministry of Healing 473 and 474. And then the last one, Worry is blind and cannot discern the future. But Jesus sees the end from the beginning. In every difficulty, he has his way prepared to bring relief. No good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. Our Heavenly Father has a thousand ways to provide for those for us of which we know nothing. Those who accept the one principle of making the service of God supreme will find perplexity vanish and a plain path before their feet. Ministry of Healing 481 in both of these, she speaks about making God's service first and foremost. And she mentions in the first quote about homely but sacred duties. Your first ministry is your home. Your first ministry is your husband, wife, children, mother, father, brother, whoever is closest to you. And if you are not seeking to excel in their service, if you cannot give up self for them, you are not doing what you need to do on your part. And remember, it's a two-sided coin. You know, the Lord says, show me your faith. But then he says, show me your works. 
So he needs both. He needs us to show him our faith by our works. This is not legalism. Legalism is what you do to save yourself, but love is what you do because you want to please the other. When we love Christ so much, our days, our weeks, our months, our minutes, our seconds will be, how can I please him today? I pray that what was said in some way helped you if you were feeling low, encouraged you in some sense. These are just my personal thoughts for me. This is maybe not relevant to you, but if it is, I pray that you will give it some thought and have a great day. Bye.